QuickBooks Online 2021, pay payroll tax. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Online 2021. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice problem. We're gonna be opening up the trusty trial balance by right-clicking on the tab up top. We're gonna to duplicate that tab. We're gonna go down to the reports then on the left-hand side. Then I'm gonna be searching in the, in the find area for the trusty trial balance, The not the trail balance, but the trial balance. Opening that up, range change up top to end point, end date, 12.31.21. Run that report. Close up the hamburger. Hold down control. Scroll up just a bit. We're talking about the process of then paying off the payroll within QuickBooks. Now, whenever we think about QuickBooks, I just want to point out that there's multiple ways that you can kind of set up QuickBooks. You can do it within the QuickBooks software, which means typically you'd be having an add-on feature to add on the process of payroll and that could have different levels of how much that would cost and whatnot. Or you can be having some third party processing the payroll and helping you out with human resources, possibly something like an ADP or a paychex. And the way you enter that into the system may differ a little bit in terms of how you're going to be paying or what the process will be to be paying off the payroll. But the idea of payroll is going to be straightforward in either method. And you want to have a concept of payroll because no matter how you deal with it, whether it be internal or external, you gotta know what's gonna happen to the financial statements, and many people do not have a good understanding of that, so if you do, then you got kind of an advantage that, that could be a benefit in many places. So in any case, if we, if we go down to the payroll, what happens when we process the payroll? We end up with payroll liability. So if we were to process payroll without any you know, added government laws on it, it would be just like any other expense. We would say we'd handshake with our, with our employees, and we'd say, yeah, I'll pay you, you know, weekly, monthly, biweekly, whatever. And then I'll, I'll decrease the checking account every time I pay you. And the other side's going to be then going to payroll expense. And that would be it. But, of course, the, the government then, once again, kind of makes us our tax collector to one degree, makes us their tax collector to one degree, and also charges us taxes not on our net income, but on the income made by our employees. <laughs> so we actually have a payroll t a tax over and above the expense. So that means that we have these expenses when we generate the payroll. We have to take the gross wages, as you know, we take out of the gross wages and we're just concentrating on the federal side of things. The federal income tax, which isn't our tax, the employer tax, but the employee's tax for things like their federal income tax, their social security, and their Medicare. And those things that we Tech, in, in theory, we take them from the employee. We never really give it to them. It's theirs, but we never really give it to them because, again, the IRS is kind of making us their tax collector. So we take it from there before they even get their greedy little hands on it or their, <laughs> the employee's hands on it. And then we give it to the IRS or, or we're going to give it to the IRS. So then we, we increase the payroll liabilities for those items. Now, note, as we look at the payroll liabilities, QuickBooks is kind of breaking them out into different categories or segments to give us a better idea of what of what is going on but notice that we don't really have to do that we could just put this into one account called payroll liabilities and and just group it as one basically liability item which if you're talking about external reporting to would probably be better right the external readers don't really need to know the detail that it's california pit or SDI or SUI or ETT or whatnot. They don't need to know that. They just need to know it's a liability. But this could be useful for internal purposes. You might set up, say, another sub account here to put this all into one sub account. But if you were if you were not doing it through QuickBooks, then you might just record a journal entry, which would simply be payroll liabilities, for example, rather than having the detail broken out in this format. And then what we have to do then is pay our portion of payroll taxes, which will be Social Security, Medicare, and some other taxes like federal unemployment tax, which will then be the taxes portion that we're getting charged over and above what we pay the employees, not based on our earnings, but based on the earnings that we pay to the employees. And of course, when we process the payroll, we have not yet paid that either. So we're increasing the payroll taxes for that amount as well. You can see it kind of in a table chart such as this that we worked on a little bit on the prior presentation where we had, say, Erica's income, where, where this was her gross earnings. We took from Erica the 4960, the 1160, and the 1110, 110, $110 for Social Security, Medicare, and their federal income tax, bringing their net pay, her net pay, down to the 62880. And then we had to match 
our payroll taxes, employer payroll taxes from the 4960 and the 1160. So now we have to pay the payroll taxes and it's kind of like the sales tax that it could differ depending on some circumstances. The higher our payroll is, the more likely the government is going to want their money sooner. They're going to want us to process the payroll at a sooner point. But uh, we're going to think about it on, a, on like a monthly basis. So we do payroll monthly in our practice problem. Month one payroll taxes then that happened in January, we're going to be paying in February. Okay, so if we process the payroll within QuickBooks, I'm going to go back to the first tab. Then we would be wanting to use our payroll options down here in the taxes tab. So we would so in the payroll tab, in our practice problem, we set up payroll, even though it's normally an add-on feature because they gave us a free kind of a 30-day test period for it. So we utilized that. But there's a kind of a problem to working payroll within QuickBooks Online because you kind of have to process it in real time to use their functionality effectively for paying the payroll taxes that are going to be owed. So we're actually not going to pay the payroll taxes through the QuickBooks Online, but we'll pay it uh, manually, which is a similar process you might use if you had an external payroll provider, such as uh, an ADP or a Paychex. But here's where, and, and again, we have another course that goes into payroll more in depth, and we might go into payroll just in and of itself in another practice problem. But that's one of the limitations with payroll in a practice problem with QuickBooks Online. It's it's difficult to go like enter payroll in a prior period or in a future period. You kind of got to work the problem basically in real time. But in any case, you got the payroll items up top and then the payroll tax is then down below where you have the sales tax tab and then the payroll tax tab up top. So once again, this is where you'd want to be going if you were going to be processing payroll using QuickBooks to process the payroll, which we, we have another course on if you want to get into more detail or we might have information more in depth on this process at the bottom or after this course. For our purposes here, we're going to practice uh, processing the payroll or just making and writing a check for it in a similar type of fashion as you might see if you had an ADP or a paychex, a third party that was processing the payroll, you would still need to enter the check in some way, the payment that would be happening for the payroll taxes into your uh, QuickBooks system in one way, shape, or form. So we entered basically the liabilities here, and this is just for one payroll. So this is going to be all the amounts that are going to be due uh, at this point in time. Now, as I do this, when we when we write these checks, it's going to look a little bit ugly because we have these multiple kind of payroll liability accounts. I'm not going to write the checks to the to the actual accounts here, but I'm going to use the uh, parent account, which is basically the payroll liabilities account up top, uh, to to record all the checks. So let's take a look at what that will look like. We're going to put in three checks or four checks. We're going to be matching out basically the federal income tax, the Social Security, and then the Medicare, even though those three checks will be going to the same kind of kind of they're going to the federal government in essence but they're for three different things and then we've got the payroll taxes to the state that we'll write a check for and that's going to be the pit so the liability checks then if we add them up in total we've got then the liabilities of the 232.4 plus the 55 plus the 1421.626 plus the 27.5 and that's going to be the 173616. So I'm going to go back to the first tab over here and I'm going to go then to the new button and I'm going to write then a expense type of form, expense type of form. And then I'm going to be writing it to the internal revenue service. So, and obviously you get, you would want to be setting up your pay, payment processes as you set up basically your payroll process with the internal revenue service in terms of what's the function or format that you're going to be paying them in but i'm going to write the expense form here we're going to say save and then i'm going to say it's the checking account we're going to say that this happened as of 022821 payment method is going to be i'll say electronic payment method of some shape and then we're going to go down below and then the other side i'm just going to take to payroll liabilities it's going to go to the payroll liabilities i'm going to go to basically the parent account for the payroll liabilities and in the description i'm going to say this first one is for the federal income tax fit and the amount then for the fit was for the 830 so i'm going to say here it's the 830 and I'm breaking this out so that it'll match kind of what's on our uh, when we do our bank reconciliation 
we're going to have this information on the bank recs. So as we make these payments, anything that's coming out of the checking account, we want to be able to tie it out to the payments that we're going to, uh, to what's going to match on the bank statement. So as we're making any kind of payments, normally the payments will match up exactly to what's going to be on the bank statement, whereas the deposits, we have to go through that undeposited funds type of thing. But there are times when you're tempted to basically group things together that would decrease on uh, on the cash side of things like expenses in such a way that they, they might be grouped differently. And once again, you want to be mindful of anything that's going out of the checking account or into the checking account that it will then appear on your system in the same way that it's going to appear on the bank statement so that you can reconcile. So I'm going to say save and new. And then I'm going to make another one here. So we're going to make another one. I'm going to say it's going to the internal revenue service again. Internal revenue service. And do you want to pre-fill? Uh, say, yeah, yeah, go ahead and pre-fill it. So it's pre-filling. As of the 28 payment method, it's going to be electronic again. And this time payroll taxes. But this one's not for FIT. This one's going to be for, I'm just going to call it uh, Medicare. So Medicare. And Medicare is going to be for, I think it's the 156.12 for the Medicare. And let's go ahead and save and new on that one. Save and new on that one. And then we're going to do the Internal Revenue Service again. Internal Revenue Service. And I'll say, yeah, go ahead and populate it. And this one's going to be payroll taxes, but this time I'm going to say it's for Social Security, which I'm just going to say SS, so it's the Social Security portion. And that's going to be for the one or the 667.54, 667.54. So I'm going to say save and new on that one. And then we have the federal unemployment tax, which I'm going to put a separate transaction for. So I'm going to say internal revenue service as our generic vendor here, populate it. And this one's going to be for payroll liabilities, but this one's for FUTA. And that is the abbreviation that they have. I know some people, uh, anyways. So we're going to say that that's going to be for this item, which is going to be the 2750. So we'll pick up the 2750.5. And then I'm going to say save and new on that one. And then we had the California taxes here, which were the PIT, uh, just the PIT tax, the 55. So I'll pick that one up. And I'm just going to say it's going to go to California payroll. And that's a very generic name. That's not what the department would be called, but this is generic. We're not focusing in on the state here. So I just want to put a generic item there. Payroll taxes will depend, of course, on the state, whether or not you need to pay them and, and exactly how it will be set up. But it should be kind of a similar process. And then once again, we have payroll taxes, payroll liabilities, liabilities here. Picking that up, this is going to be for SIT, state income tax, for the employee. And we said that was for the... Uh, what did we say? $55. 55 55 on that one. Let's go ahead and then save and close it finally. And then we'll check it out. So save and close. We'll check it out. I'm going to go back to the first tab. We're going to freshen it up running that report. Now, again, it's not the prettiest looking thing, but you can see conceptually what is happening here, right? So now we've got, if I hold down control and scroll up, we put the whole payment into, into the payroll liability kind of parent account. Uh, even though the system's breaking it out between these items. So once again, if we paid it through the payroll processing system, then then QuickBooks would have nicely applied it out to the, the proper account that they set up. But we just lumped it into the one payroll account, which again, you probably would do if you had like a third party payer that you were paying like an ADP or paychecks and you just wanted to enter this for the information for the financial statements to be correct on the books. Although again, when would you do that, you want to be careful that you're putting it in the same format that they're going to be in the uh, the bank account when you see it clear the bank account so that you can reconcile. Let's let's open this up again or open up a new tab and look at the balance sheet, which will be a little bit cleaner, hopefully. Right click and duplicate this tab once again. We're going to go down to the balance. So reports on the left hand side. We'll go to the reports on the left hand side. We're going to go into the good old balance sheet. 
balance sheet report, closing up the hamburger, range changing it, ending at 12.31.21, running the report, scrolling down, and there we've got our liabilities now. You can see how we have uh, the parent account here. Now, if I was to minimize this item, then it all matches up to zero. So we had the, the payroll that happened in January, and then uh, after January ended, we paid off the liability. So the liability went up when we processed the payroll, then we paid it off. So if we look at it in one lump sum, we see it's all going to be paid off here. If I open this up, the reason we have these sub accounts is because QuickBooks set them up in the format that we set up the payroll. That's just how they set it up to try to give us some more internal detail for our purposes. Probably not necessary for external purposes. If we processed and paid the payroll through Intuit, through the Intuit system, which you want to do if you're setting it up through Intuit, then it would apply it out to these accounts and this would be back down to zero again. Then we'll process the payroll in February which in our system, we will pay off the liabilities related to it then in March. And once again, if you had like a third party that was processing the payroll, like an ADP or a paychecks, then they may actually help you to even process the checks, actually, you know, write the checks and whatnot. And then you, what you would want to do is put it into this system and QuickBooks probably in a lump sum type of format, possibly using only one payroll liability account that would be then going up and then going down. Uh, when you pay it off because you may not need the detail because the detail will be tracked by the third party that's the point of having the third party to be to be tracking that amount of detail however when you put it into your system even if you're just taking their information and put it in it into our system in a lump sum format we want to make sure that the payments that were made most likely electronic payments to the fed and the state for payroll taxes are in our books in the same format as they're going to be grouped once again on the bank statement so that we can then reconcile. So when we do the bank reconciliation, we want to group them together. And that's kind of an issue that you want to think about with payroll if you have a third party helping you out with the payroll. Because the tendency is to just say, I'm just going to do one lump sum transaction, which may work. But you got to realize that if you're affecting the checking account, then you're going to have to lump things up. You're going to have to add things together in the checking account. If you lump, for example, multiple paychecks together as if they were one payroll journal entry then you'll have to reconcile that difference in the bank statement um, when you reconcile which might be worthwhile maybe not right same thing with the payroll liabilities if you lump it all together with one journal entry that you're paying out of the checking account might work well but you still got to remember that if you do it that way then when you reconcile you're gonna have to do a little bit work more work on the reconciliation to to tie out what's on the bank statement in multiple formats to what is in our books which we put in with one lump sum journal entry so in any case this is where we stand at this point in time with regards to the trial balance i'll freshen it up just to make sure it's up to date uh, you can look through it now check your numbers if you're working along with us and uh, we'll print this out as well so you can check it on your own time too